everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the living organisms and in this context, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the classification of the living organisms, evolution of the living organisms and then we also discussed about the uh, different types of uh, cells, we have discussed about the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell and subsequent to that we have also discussed about the different, uh, different types of biomolecules, uh, their structure and functions. And then uh, we have also discussed in the previous lecture, we have also discussed about the uh, central dogma of uh, molecular biology or the central dogma of life. And in this particular module, we are discussing about the some of the uh, cell mediated processes and uh, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the uh, defense responses or the immune system. So, continuing our discussion about the immune system, when if you remember when we were discussing about the antibody uh, development, we have said that the antibodies can be developed when the antigen is going to be, uh, you know, be going to be trapped by the surveillance system. So, the surveillance system is mostly being consist of the antigen presenting cells and these antigen presenting cells are either the macrophages which are going to be present at every tissue sites or it could be dendro dendritic cells or the B cells. So, uh, in the today's lecture what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss about the how we can be able to how these antigen presenting cells are processing the antigen. So, if you recall when we were discussing about in the previous lecture, what we said is that the, when the antigen comes in contact with these uh, antigen presenting cells, they are being engulfed by the antigen presenting cells and then these cells, then these uh, uh, molecules are going to be processed, right? So, antigen is going to be processed and then it is going to be presented along with the MSC class 2. And then when the it is going to be presented by the MSC class 2, it is going to be recognized by the T cells and then D cells are actually going to give the signal to the B cells and then these B cells are actually going to uh, you know, differentiate into the memory cells as well as the plasma cells and then these plasma cells are going to start secreting the antibodies and that's how these antibodies are actually going to, uh, you know, uh, participate into the defense responses. So, what you see here is that the basics of this whole process lies in the two very important processes. One is uh, when the antigen comes in contact with the antigen presenting cells and then the antigen presenting cells are actually going to take up these cells and uh, they are going to be engulfed. And then the second process is that how these antigen presenting cells uh, when these uh, you know are going to process the uh, antigen so that it is going to be presented along with the MSC class 2. So, what we have uh, discussed so far, what we have said is that the immune system is going to be consist of the two different types of uh, cells, right? It is going to have the uh, surveillance system or it is going to have the executory cells, okay? In the surveillance system, you are going to have the antigen presenting cells or the APCs, whereas in the executory cells, you are going to have the cells which are going to cause the defense response, such as the you are going to have the C cells or the B cells, right? So, um, and uh, both of these response cells are actually going to secrete the different types of molecules so that it is actually going to cause the immune responses like they are going to secrete the cytokines, uh, they are going to secrete the uh, reactive oxygen species or the free radicals and uh, all these molecules are actually going to be responsible for the uh, generation of the uh, immune responses. Compared to that, the APCs are actually going to attack onto the antigen or the organisms and then these organisms, this antigen is going to be presented along with the MSC class 2, right? 
So, as I said, and what we have just now discussed, right, the end, when the APCs are going to come in contact with the antigen, this antigen is going to be engulfed by the APCs and then the antigen is going to be processed and then the mostly these antigens are made up of, of the proteins. So, these proteins are then going to be digested into the small peptides and then these small peptides are going to be presented along with the MSC class 2. So, APCs are actually going to do two functions. One, it is actually going to engulf the uh, antigen, right? So, and this uh, and they are also going to process the antigen so that they can be presented. So, they are actually going to have the presentation of the antigen. So, they are going to have two functions. One is the engulfment. So, the process through which the anti APCs are going to engulf the antigen is called as phagocytosis. Okay. And the process through which the APCs are going to present the antigen along with the MSC class 2 is uh, actually having a additional process which is going to be called as the phagosome uh, maturation. And in the phagosome maturation, the phagosomes are actually going to fuse with the lysosomes and these two then the lysosomal content is going to be delivered. So, when the phagosome is going to mature, it is going to be fused with the lysosome and that is why it is actually going to form the phagolysosomes. And uh, when they will form the phagolysosome, the phagolysosome is actually going to have the, uh, the content from the lysosomes and you know that the lysosomal content is going to be degrading in nature, right? So, it is going to have the hydrolytic enzymes, it is going to have the different types of proteases and its pH is also going to be very low. And because of that, the antigen is going to be converted into the uh, peptides, right? So, antigen is going to be get converted into the peptides and then these peptides are actually going to be presented along with the MSC class 2 onto the surface of these uh, APCs and that is actually going to give you, that is going to give the signal to the T cells and then T cell is eventually going to give a signal to the B cell and that is how the B cell is going to start secreting the antibodies. So, once the antibodies are being formed, then the antibodies are actually going to attack onto the antigen, right? So, it is going to bind the antigen, okay? And that is how the antigen is going to be trapped by the antibodies. And apart from that, since the antibodies are going to have the their, you know, the specific receptors, these antigen, co uh, antibody coated antigen is going to be a very good substrate or very good uh, uh, engulfment. So, it is going to be engulfed very e efficiently by the macrophages. It is going to be engulfed very efficiently uh, by the other, uh, you know, cells and that is how the antigen is going to be removed from the infection. So, this is the just a general overview. What we are going to discuss today is we are going to discuss about the phagocytosis, how you, what is the phagocytosis, what are the different events in the phagocytosis and how once the phagosome is going to be formed, how the phagosome will take, is phagosome is going to mature into the lysosomes. So, when we talk about the phagocytosis, uh, phagocytosis is a word which is made up of, of the two different words. One is called as the phago and the other one is called as the cytosis, okay. So, phago means uh, eating, okay, and eating the large particles. So, when you do the eating, uh, you always eat the large particles. And cytosis means the cell, okay. So, phago, so what is literally means by the phagocytosis is that the eating by cell, okay. And uh, apart from the phagocytosis, you have another term which is called as pinocytosis. So, pinocytosis means the drinking by cell, okay. So, if and all the pinocytosis or the phagocytosis is completely being dependent on the particle size. So, if the particle size is more than 1 micrometer, then it is going to be considered as the phagocytosis. If it is less than 1 micrometer, then it is going to be a micrometer, then it is going to be considered as the pinocytosis. And the pinocytosis is, uh, is a process through which the cell is actually acquiring the 
liquids what are present into the system so it's going to acquire like growth factors different types of uh, nutrition like and uh, amino acids and all those kind of things it can be uh, achieved through phenocytosis whereas through the phagocytosis it is actually going to acquire the uh, large particles like the uh, lipid lipid vesicles or different types of organisms and so on uh, as far as the phagocytosis is concerned, so you might see that the phagocytosis means it is actually going to eat the large particles. So when you talk about the particles, uh, the particles can be of two different types. Particles could be which are without any uh, coating. So they can be non-coated particles or they could be coated particles which means the particles which will have some kind of ligands so for example you can have a simple uh, lipid vesicles right so you can have a simple lipid vesicle that is going to be considered as the non coated particles or you can actually have a bacterium uh, which could be a coated particle because in the case of bacteria you can have the different types of bacterial antigens which are going to be present so accordingly the phagocytosis also could be of because the phagocytosis has to be take place either for this particle or this particle that's why the phagocytosis also could be of two different types it could be the receptor uh, non receptor mediated phagocytosis non receptor mediated uh, phagocytosis or the receptor mediated phagocytosis uh, as the name suggests receptor mediated phagocytosis where the receptors which are present onto the cell surface are actually going to engage the ligands what are present onto the uh, onto the uh, onto the particular particle or particular antigen Whereas in the non-receptor uh, mediated phagocytosis, it is going to be a general process through which the, uh, the particles are going to be internalized into the system. Now, if you if you see the, um, so this is going to be the non-particle, non-receptor mediated, this is going to be called as receptor mediated phagocytosis. So the initial engagement are actually going to be only the difference points. Except, except apart from that, the non-receptor mediated phagocytosis is going to be less efficient uh, compared to the receptor mediated uh, phagocytosis because uh, it is, does not have any kind of attachments, right? It does not have the way to actually hold the particles, right? And that's why it is actually going to be less efficient. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, the non-specific. So it's going to be non-specific uh, because uh, it's, it will actually going to engulf any particle which comes in the vicinity of the uh, APCs or in the vicinity of the cell. Whereas uh, in the case of the receptor mediated uh, uh, phagocytosis is going to be specific because it is going to be mediated by the receptors. Uh, so let's uh, understand a general un, uh, scheme, right? So in a general scheme, what happen is that, uh, so in a general scheme, what will happen is that when you have a cell, like you have a macrophages, right? So if you have a macrophage, and if this macrophage is going to perform, so it's going to actually be able to perform the receptor mediated phagocytosis or the non receptor mediated phagocytosis. So once the bacteria is actually or the particle is actually going to come in contact with the macrophages. So suppose this is the particle, right, which is actually going to come in contact with the these macrophages right? so for example uh, if this is a particle which comes in the vicinity of this particle now you can have uh, attachment points through which these uh, receptor this uh, particle can actually attach to the macrophages so then it becomes a receptor mediated uh, endocytosis but as soon as this happens then the then the uh, macrophage what the macrophage is going to do is it is actually going to start uh, producing its uh, philopodia okay or start uh, increasing a philopodia and uh, once this particle is going to interact with the lipids what is present onto the macrophages they will actually going to 
cover the particles from the both the sides okay and this will in advance right so as as the time will uh, pass on it is actually going to be keep advancing like this and ultimately what will happen is that these two uh, lipid vesicles or the plasma membrane is actually going to fuse and once that happens then what will happen is that you are going to see that it is actually going to uh, you know some it is going to happen like this okay so it's going to uh, you know so the initial membrane which was in uh, direct contact with the lipid uh, the, uh, the particle is actually going to be disappear and then it is actually going to be a part of the vesicles so what happen is ultimately is that in the macrophages the particle is going to be internalized right and the particle is so this is the suppose the uh, and the particle is going to be entrapped outside by the plasma membrane so plasma membrane is actually going to cover the particles and this uh, plasma membrane containing particle is going to be called as the phagosome so okay so this is the particle what you have right this is the phagosome particle and ultimately this particle is going to be entrapped in a double membrane structure and this double membrane structure is going to be called as the phagosome uh, in a septar mediated uh, phagocytosis uh, what will happen is that you are actually going to have the uh, macrophages right so it's like for example you can have uh, example of like the macrophages uh, containing the receptor right so it's going to have a receptor uh, and then what will happen is that it is actually going to bind the ligand okay so it's going to be uh, interact with the ligand what is present onto the onto the onto this particular object so this is actually the bacteria and once it binds actually it is actually going to draw or it's going to be actually activate the cellular machinery in such a way that this particular area where these uh, so this is the non receptor mediated uh, phagocytosis where uh, and this is going to be the receptor mediated phagocytosis okay so as soon as this uh, receptor is actually going to engage with the ligand so this is actually a bacterium and it's going to have different types of ligands so when the this receptor is actually going to hold the bacteria with the help of the uh, ligand and receptor interactions this receptor is actually going to have a downstream signaling and because of this downstream signaling this area which is actually going to be of the where the receptor is present is actually going to be coated by a proteins so this is going to be coated by a proteins okay and these proteins are called as the clathrin proteins okay so this clathrin protein is going to coat this area where the receptor is present and this particular particle is engaged now once the catechin is going to coat this part of the plasma membrane okay then it is actually going to engage original machinery so it, what it's going to engage it is actually going to engage the actin so it's going to you know engage the actin uh, monomers okay and clathrin is a is a trimeric protein okay so these trimeric proteins are actually coating it's present like this okay so these trimeric proteins are uh, the uh, making a mesh right so that's how they are coating so these are like you can imagine like this and then it's going to have a mesh like this okay and uh, the, this uh, uh, the clathrin proteins are actually going to make a mesh and because of this mesh this area is going to be completely hold by the clathrin uh, proteins and then these clathrin proteins are actually going to be associated with actin and then this actin is actually going to be associated with myosin right and you know that the myosin has a uh, ability to pull the whole thing so then ultimately what will happen the ultimately this whole system which is actually being coated with the clathrin proteins uh, is actually going to be pulled by the actin and myosin system okay and because of that it will actually going to cause a depression right 
So here you have a receptor, right, which is actually having a ligand to bind. And then this keep pulling, right, keep pulling, keep pulling like this. And ultimately what will happen, it is actually going to be present inside and it's going to be, this is the vesicle, right, where you are going to have the receptor and that on the receptor, you are going to have the particles, right. So this receptor is then going to be a lipid you know double membrane the plasma membrane and these are the called as the phagosomes okay in some cases when the these uh, these are the food particles like for example the ldl receptors then this receptor is also going to be in you know once this is going to be is going to be recycled back okay so it's going to go and again to be present on the plasma membrane to uh, take up the additional lipid molecules but if it is a uh, bacteria or something, then this phagosome is actually going to fuse with the lysosomes. So these are the two general mechanisms through which the phagocytosis can happen. Either it could be a generalized uh, mechanism where the lipid part, the particle is going to be, uh, you know, covered by the plasma membrane, and then eventually the plasma, the lipid, the uh, particle is going to be a part of the cells. Uh, in either of the case, it is actually going to form a particle entrapped in a uh, double layer lipid vesicles and this double layer lipid vesicle where you have the particle is called as the phagosomes and then eventually the phagosome is actually going to interact with the lysosomes. Uh, so, because the phagosome is actually going to have the different types of proteins and that's how they are actually going to be directed against the lysosomes and then uh, because of this interaction, the it's actually going to be get converted into a species which is called as the phagolysosomes. And in the phagolysosomes, you are actually going to have the phagosome which is actually going to have the content of the phagosomes and the content of the lysosomes and that is why the within the phagosome you are actually going to have the uh, so this is going to be like the phagolysosomes and uh, eventually the, in the phagolysosomes it is actually going to digest the uh, the antigen and once it is the, going to digest the antigen it is going to be form the different types of peptides and when they will form the different types of peptides these peptides are going to be coupled with the mhc class 2 and that's how they are actually going to be presented onto the apcs along with the mhc class 2 okay and that's why the mhc class 2 is actually going to have a peptide bound so this is actually going to have a signal for the T cells to uh, give the, uh, you know, to respond and that is how the eventually the T cell is actually going to give the signal to the B cell and that is how there will be a production of antibodies. So if you want to study the phagocytosis, you have to understand that the phagocytosis means the internalization of the particle, right. So it is going to be like this. So what you have to study is, uh, you have to study the internalization of the particles that uh, study you can do by two methods one you can actually do by the microscopic method right so you can actually use the microscopic uh, method you can actually and uh, you know stain the cells and then you can observe these vesicles inside the microscope the other is you can actually do the flow cytometry based assays and you can actually be able to uh, understand the um, you know the process by more as a quantitative pattern so let's uh, understand how you can be able to study the phagocytosis in a uh, in a in a in a professional uh, apices like the macrophages. So if you want to study the uh, phagocytosis uh, by the microscopic method, what are the things you require? You require the different types of reagents, right? So you require the uh, methanol, you require the acetone. These are the part of the uh, fixation system so it's going to be uh, used for the preparing the fixative then you require the PBS which is going to be a buffer right so that is going to be used for the washing then you require the mounting media and then you require the latex beads so these latex beads are actually going to be uh, function as the object and then you require a dye which is called as the philippines so the philippine is a is a is a uh, is a protein is a 
dye which is actually going to stain the uh, cholesterol. So, it is going to be uh, bind to the cholesterol. So, ideally it is actually going to give you the position of the plasma membrane and uh, Philippine is uh, when it is interacting with the cholesterol it is going to give you the blue color fluorescence. So, you prepare the 5 milligram stock solution of Philippine in 100 percent alcohol. The working solution is 50 microgram per ml in the PPS. Then you require the glass slides where you are actually going to perform the experiments. Then you require the cover glasses. So, you can use the 12 mm circular cover glasses. The cover glasses which you are going to use in the lab are has to be washed with the alcohol and allow the cover glasses to air dry. Keep the cover glasses in a 50 ml glass beaker and wrap it in an aluminum foil uh, to clear the cover glasses so that you can actually be able to avoid the contamination when you are want to study the phagocytosis in your lab conditions. Then you require the forceps. The forceps are required only to you know uh, handle the uh, cover slips as well as the uh, cover glasses. Uh, then you so autoclave the forces so that you can avoid the uh, contamination during the phagocytosis experiment and then you also require the microscope. So, you can also require the fluorescent microscopes. As far as the method is concerned, it has a different steps. So, in the step 1 what you are going to do is you are going to take the macrophages. So, these are the macrophage cell lines which you are going to culture in a DMEM media containing 10 percent ABS and 1 percent antibiotic cocktail. So, when you then in the step 2 you remove the cells from the cell culture plate by the thipsonization uh, or by the 0.5 percent EDTA. So, when you do the thipsonization it is actually going to cleave the adapter uh, the attachment proteins which are actually allowing the cells to attach to the dishes and that is how it is they will come out in the solutions. Then the step 3 you are going to plate the 10,000 cells on the 12 mm cover glasses and incubate it in the 24 well dish with 0.5 mm media containing FBS and the cocktail. So, when you do that the cells will go and stick to the circular uh, cover slip. So, they will go and stick to the circular cover clips okay? and uh, then you can actually be able to use them. Then the step 4 you can incubate the cells overnight at 37 degrees Celsius in 5 percent CO2 and it allow the cells to attach to the cover glasses. In the step 5 you wash the cells with the DMEM without FBS. So, you wash these cells with the uh, media right. So, you, you can wash it with the DMEM without containing serum. So, that is how you can actually be able to remove the serum and other components because you want to do the phagocytosis under the non receptor mediated phagocytosis and that is why you remember that we have taken the latex. Then you prepare a suspension of the latex beads. So, 10 to power 6 beads per ml what you are going to prepare in the DMEM without FBS. So, why we are removing the FBS is because the FBS is containing different types of growth factors and these growth factors are actually going to coat the latex beads and that is how then it is going to be receptor mediated phagocytosis rather than the non-receptor mediated phagocytosis. And then in the 7 uh, you remove the media and add the bead suspension to the well and centrifuge the 24 weight dish at 1000 rpm for 1 minute at 4 degrees Celsius. So, when you do that what will happen is that the beads are actually going to come in contact with the uh, cells and that is how they will you are going to start the in, uh, phagocytosis. So, this is actually going to be considered as time 0 for the phagocytosis experiment. So, when you going to start, uh, spin the cells that is going to be considered as the time 0. From this time you can actually be allow the cells to uh, eat the uh, particles for as many long time you want. Uh, then you incubate the plate for 1 hour at 37 degrees Celsius and 5 percent uh, 5 CO2. So, that is the time what you have given the cells to uh, you know eat the, uh, these beads. Then you wash the well with 1 ml PBS without PBS to remove the uninternalized beads. So, you are actually going to remove whatever the beads were not been phagocytosed. Then you fix the biological sample with the methanol acetone mixture at minus 20 for 15 minutes. You hydrate the sample with the 1 percent PPS and then you stain the cells with the Philippine for uh, 1 hour at 37 degrees Celsius in the dark right 
So when you do that, uh, the, since the Philippine is going to give you the blue color fluorescence, it should be uh, done in a dark so that it should not be the signal should not be get quenched. Then you keep the one drop of the mounting media, the glycerol mounting media containing the anti-fading agent on the glass slide and keep the cover slip onto the uh, uh, cover slip onto the glass slide on the and then you form the glass slide by making a thin rim by the nail polish. So if you do so, what will happen is that it is actually going to give you a uh, the the prepared slides and now what you can do is you can take these prepared slide and observe them under the microscope. Now what you are going to see a typical phagocytosis of beads will represent by the appearance of the beads in the face and the same bead is going to be encircled by the blue color fluorescence. For example, you can see here right so in this particular area what you see here is there is a do beads which are been attached which are look like as so these are these are the macrophage cells so these are the j7cn4 cells and this is the uh, bright field image right so how the field will look like when you see under the naked eye so this is the uh, what you're going to see these are the beads right what you are going to be present onto the cell surface and then if you uh, you know this so if you convert the channel to the fluorescence uh, what will happen? It's going to show you the blue color fluorescence and under the blue color fluorescence, this particular bead is actually having a blue color uh, band. So that blue color band is saying that it all, it got internalized and uh, after the internalizations, the, it has been covered by the plasma membrane because initially you are going to have a particle like this, but when it gets phagocytosed, it is actually going to be present like this. It's going to have a, uh, a plasma membrane because remember that I explained you that the, the cell is going to engulf the particles and that's how it is actually going to uh, be entrapped by the plasma membrane. Now, apart from this particular assay where you this is going to be, you know, very, very time consuming. So this microscopic assay is going to be very, very time consuming. It is going to be labor oriented and it's actually required an expertise to see which uh, bead is actually going to be internalized and which is not, right? So to avoid this, you can also use a flow cytometry based uh, phagocytosis assay. Uh, the principle of the four cytometric assay is uh, different from the uh, these microscopic assay. Now, what you are going to see in the flow cytometric based assay is that you are actually going to exploit the uh, idea of that the you are going to have see for example this is the macrophages right this is the macrophages right so when you add the particles you are uh, or when you give the particles. Uh, to eat for example if I have given a bacteria right and what I can do is I can just uh, take the bacteria and I stain them with the uh, fluorescenti for example I can just stain it with the fit C so what will happen is the fit C is going to give them the uh, uh, green fluorescence so uh, under these conditions uh, the you once the phagocytosis is over right so you're going to have the you have to, you are going to have the situation like this. You are going to have the bacteria which were in the process of the phagocytosis. So, uh, and there will a bacteria which are going to be internalized. So, there will be a bacteria which is going to be internalized and these are the particles which are in the process of phagocytosis, right? Now, the question is if you want to make a quantitation, right? If you can, so you have to you know destroy these phagocyte these beads right so what you can do is you can just incubate these cells under a quencher right so i'm sure if you don't know about the quencher means quenchers are the molecules which are actually going to kill the fluorescence of the uh, any particles right so what you can do is you can take the quencher so for example for the fit c i can take a quencher like the tripan blue so tripan blue e is a is a dye right so tripan blue is a charged dye and uh, it does not enter into the cell because it is a charged dye so you, but it is actually can be good enough to quench the signal or the fluorescence of the fit c so if it is present outside and if you add the tripan blue the tripan blue is going to go and bind to this particular particle and that's how 
they will get converted into a non fluorescent particle so because of that these external particles are going to be non fluorescent so now if you do a uh, flow based experiment like if you take the these cells and if you put them under the fluorescence these uh, cells can be captured and that's how you can be able to quantitate how many number of cells are actually having the particles which are internalized and then you can actually be able to uh, count and if you count you can be able to calculate the phagocytosis so uh, i have prepared uh, this is this is going to be the assay setup right so in the assay setup what you are going to do is you are going to take the cells first you are going to stain it with the uh, you know with the fit c or the fluorescein and then this is the particle this is the uh, the principle of the assay where you are actually going to add the trypan blue so trypan blue is actually a charged dye so if when you have a charged dye it will not enter inside the cell but you are going to have the two different types of particles the particle which is outside or which are just simply attached and the particle which is going to be internalized so these internalized are not sensitive to the trypan blue because the trypan blue will not enter but these external ones are actually going to be sensitive so when you add the type and blue this type and blue is actually going to quench the external signal and that's why you see there is no signal from this so when you take the fax data what you are going to see is these are the unlabeled cells and these are the labeled cells so these are the labeled cells right so when you add the cells you can actually be able to capture the fax data under the two conditions minus uh, type and blue and the plus type and blue so okay so minus type and blue is actually going to give you the idea about how many number of cells are uh, present whether it is outside or inside and then when you add the type and blue there should be a shift of the peak onto the uh, left side uh, so uh, this is what is going to do right so if you add the type and uh, if you add the type and blue this particular peak which was present here is going to be shifted onto this side and that actually is going to say that a large number of particles were present uh, inside also and that this information uh, so you you can actually be able to calculate the average fluorescent intensity for this blue color um, uh, peak and you can actually be able to calculate the average fluorescent intensity for this green color peaks and that can be used to calculate the phagocytosis this is what it is uh, going to show so uh, this is all about the phagocytosis so once the phagocytosis is or done it is actually going to form the phagosome right so these phagosomes are then actually going to fuse with the lysosomes and that's how they are actually going to form the phagolysosomes now if you want to study this particular event and you want to see how the phagosome is actually fusing with the lysosomes you can use a simple assay so the phagosomes uh, are actually going to fuse with the lysosomes right so you can actually be able to uh, in study the interaction between the phagosome and the lysosome so that you can be able to understand how the phagosome phago lysosome is forming and that's how it is actually going to help you to understand the process of the phago lysosome formations and uh, you can actually be able to study the different types of factors and other kinds of events and even like the drug molecules which are actually going to either the accelerate this process or actually going to uh, inhibit this process so in this case uh, when you want to do a assay what you have to do is you have to first uh, prepare the phagosomes right and you also have to prepare the lysosomes and then you are actually going to mix these uh, phagosome and lysosomes together and that's how it is actually you can be able to study the phagolysosomes so uh, if you want to perform this uh, you have to use the uh, following materials so what you require is the uh, methanol and acetone which is actually for a uh, fixation right so this is uh, required for fixation this is buffer triton x100 is required for the permeabilizations so it's uh, uh, for making uh, holes into the cell so that you can be able to use the different types of reagents 
you can use the bsa which is for the you know for blocking agents you require the primary antibodies secondary antibodies you require the epiflocene antibodies you require a 1 micromole uh, latex beads and then you require the philippines and then you also require the rhodamine dextran so rhodamine dextran is required for labeling the lysosomes and uh, you require the philippines which is for uh, you know staining the phagosomes and uh, remember that the philippine is actually going to give you the blue fluorescence whereas the rhodamine dextran is actually going to give you the red fluorescence uh, now first is you have to step one you have to prepare the phagosomes so uh, these are the steps i think we have already discussed right so what you have to do is you have to take the macrophages you plate it into the uh, into the cells and you have to prepare a suspension of the latex beads and then you have to allow these beads to be fed by the uh, macrophages and that you are going to do and then you are going to stain the cells with the philippines okay and then you are actually going to be able to monitor uh, where the phagosomes are then in the step two you are actually going to label the lysosomes okay so what you can do is you can take the cells in a 24 well dish grow them with the 100 microgram rhodamine dextran overnight so when you take the rhodamine dextran rhodamine dextran is a liquid right so that liquid is actually going to be internalized by a process which is called as the pinocytosis and anything when you are going to take up by the pinocytosis will eventually going to end up into the lysosome so that's why it is actually going to form a lysosomes where internally you are going to have the rhodamine dextran so rhodamine dextran means you are going to have the lysosome which is actually going to be uh, red colored so it's going to be filled with a liquid which is going to be red colored which means it's going to give you a red color fluorescent uh, uh, lysosomes you wash the cells with pbs and chase for one hour so that you all the radomine is going to be present into the lysosomes then in the step three you are going to uh, set up the fusion assay so what you can do is you can just add the 10 microgram per ml latex beads in 0.5 ml media and then you are going to spin at 1000 g for one minute or two minutes that is going to be considered as the time zero at that point the phagocytosis as well as the phagosome formation is going to start so that uh, from that time you can continue and you can be able to study the phagosome uh, fusing with the lysosomes you incubate the another five minutes so that it in the water bath right you incubate that in a water bath so that you can be able to uh, you know initiate the phagocytosis then remove the beads and wash them two times with pbs the media is removed and fixed with the four percent paraformaldehyde then slides are actually going to visualize under the fluorescent microscope and when you visualize them you are actually going to capture the image under the three channels one is you are going to capture under the bright field uh, you are actually going to capture under the uh, blue fluorescence and then you are also going to capture under the red fluorescence and when you do that you are going to see the slides like this so when you observe the cells in a bright field and look for the beads onto the cell do you observe the cell in the fluorescent microscope with the uv filter in the beads has a blue fluorescent then your cell can be visualized under the red channel so what will happen what you are going to see actually so what you have to do is first you are going to see the cell under the bright field okay so in the bright field you are going to see whether you the beads are present on the cell or not so these are the j7 cell 4 this is the bright field which means it's going to be um, black and white then you this is going to be the blue fluorescence this is going to be the red fluorescence okay so this is going to indicate the phagosomes right remember our previous experiment right and this is going to tell you the position of the lysosome so uh, you see here right this is this is there is a bead which is actually going to be present onto the cell now if you see the same bead under the blue fluorescence what you see here is that this bead is actually going to have a blue color fluorescence that means this bead is actually inside the cell and it is being present inside the phagosomes now if you see the same bead you will see that it also has a red color fluorescence which means 
this bead is actually having the both it is actually forming a phagosome and that phagosome is actually being fused with the lysosome so the bead uh, how the bead will look like uh, which is actually going to have the uh, you know the phagosomes fused with the lysosomes so when you see the under the flow cell microscope the bead is actually going to be present as the uh, latex beads right so you can actually imagine that the, uh, the latex beads are uh, yellow in color right so these are this is going to be the beads and that is what it is going to be look like when you are actually going to be in the, the uh, bright field okay now when you look at under the uh, blue channels it will look like this right so it's going to give you a phagosome so it's going to have a blue color intense uh, fluorescence okay that is what you see here right so this is what you see here right and now if this beads or if this phagosome is being fused with the lysosome then it is actually going to show you another ring and that another ring is actually going to be a red color ring so it's going to have the uh, the uh, red color ring which is actually indication of the phagos lysosomes so if it is having the two rims one is the blue rim the other one is red rim then it is going to be said as that the phagosome is actually being matured if you see only the blue color ring then it will say that the cell is been the object is been internalized but it does not have the um, any kind of maturations so a typical uh, phagocytosis of the bead will represent by the appearance of the beads in the face and the same bead will be circulated by the blue fluorescence from the philippine if the beads has the blue fluorescence ring then and it has further been encircled by the red ring indicates that the interaction of the lysosome and phagosome is happened so these are the two different methods uh, or the two different aspect what we have studied so far what we have studied we have discussed about the uh, the process of phagocytosis and how that can be done by the two different method we can do the non receptor mediated phagocytosis and the receptor mediated phagocytosis and we have discussed about the two different methods of the uh, you know the microscopic method and as well as the flow cytometric method to study the phagocytosis and uh, lastly we have also discussed about how you can be able to study the phagosome maturations so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspect related to uh, cell mediated responses uh, thank you